Remember to subscribe and hit the notification button to keep up to date with our latest videos. on you guys sunny afternoon here in Southern California we are actually on our way out of LA this morning uh, but before we do I'm going to drive this 2017 Acura NSX here is Sony the owner thanks for coming out bro thank you appreciate it so tell me a little bit about your car uh, why you got it and there's a few modifications that I see on the car yeah yeah so uh, this is a 2017 that I picked up uh, this year in March uh, has about 12,000 miles on it. It's a Nouvelle Blue uh, Pearl. Um, what I've done to it so far, there's not a lot of aftermarket out available for it, but mm -hmm. I do have these Vorsteiner three-piece forge wheels. Um, it also is on a iLift suspension by Science of Speed. Uh, so it's an air cup kit. Um, exhaust system is a custom exhaust system by Raj 27, three inch throughout, uh, 300 cell high flow cats and uh, a couple of just visual you know accent pieces here and there mm -hmm. awesome i uh i like the color not only because it's kind of similar to the <laughs> tropical blue on my mr2 uh but because this I, I feel like i don't know the the acura nsx this one is it sets itself like this car or this color rather sets itself apart from the audi r8 i feel like because they're very similarly yeah. proportioned and whatnot um but i'm very excited so uh can i get behind the wheel yeah Definitely. All right, awesome. Let's go for a drive uh, just up and down the road. Won't be a full uh, feature today, but we're going to take it for a drive. And then tomorrow we're actually filming a 91 NSX, uh, which is going to be insane. So we'll be, we'll be able to compare the two. Let's go for a drive. All right, you guys, what is going on? Finally, uh, 2017 Acura NSX. This was kind of a, this was a last minute shoot, so I really got to give a shout out uh, to Sony for bringing the car out on such short notice. Uh, you can check him out on Instagram. The link is in the description. Go follow this car. Uh, he goes cruising a lot, as you can tell. 12,000 miles in less than a year. Uh, a lot of guys, you know, these cars are garage queens to a lot of people, um, you know, including all supercars into that, but not this one, which is really good to see. Uh, and I bet, you know, Honda would, uh, Honda would approve. So. You guys, 3.5 liter twin turbo V6. Uh, it is a hybrid. It's kind of like a mini Porsche 918, or honestly, it's more of like the next generation GTR. I feel like it's it's. I think my first thought when uh, getting into this car was basically, okay, Nissan really will have to step their game up with whatever the next GTR is, you know, because the GTR has been around for god like 10 years now uh, and it hasn't really changed i mean yes it has more power and everything it's definitely putting down faster lap times um but again this is just a much more striking car so we're gonna go for a quick drive uh see how it kind of feels and go from there So you can actually, with the electric motors, you can run this car uh, in hybrid mode for you know limited distance. It goes up to 50 miles an hour, all electric, right? So you can creep in and out, especially down here in California right now, you can creep in and out of uh, like a car meet or a car show without uh, pissing off the cops Be with your like loud exhaust. Uh, this one, uh, like Sony was saying, has a three inch custom exhaust. Uh, and even just idling when he pulled into the parking lot, like the turbo whistle up and down is very nice. Wow, that's a very seamless gear shift. Extremely seamless. So basically, I have like a little bit of experience driving higher end cars, but that's usually not our, our bread and butter. They come around every now and again. So my benchmark for like, a quick transmission or what a you know a good transmission in a high-end car like this should feel like is always PDK 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 ever since I drove uh, the 991 GT3 RS it's I mean that to me is the benchmark uh, right alongside the McLaren 720s as well 
So as you guys know, this car uh, was a long time coming. Obviously the first gen NSX had a very, very large impact on the automotive world. Um, originally when it came out, it kind of pushed Ferrari to you know, really step their game up, uh, which sounds funny to say here in 2019, but back in the 90s, it's true. I mean, Ferrari was putting out, like there were some hits, yeah, for sure, but there were also some misses. There were a lot of misses as well. Um, so Acura and Honda kind of forced Ferrari to step their game up, and now here we are in 2019, and the two cars, like the 488 and then this, are, you know, very, very different cars. All right, second gear. Wow. That is fast. <laughs> and we are in full manual, so it holds the revs. Wow, okay, yeah, that's quick. Uh, I believe 573 horsepower at the crank for the factory. Now there's not a whole ton of aftermarket support for this vehicle just yet. I mean, it is, it's still a brand new platform. I, I mean, this is maybe the second time I've actually seen one of these like on the road, <laughs> driving on the street. We don't have many in Vancouver and when we, they are out on the road, you know, it's, it's the summertime, but. Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> That, you know, that's somewhere, uh, it definitely has a, a Tesla kind of feel about it. Now, I haven't driven a Tesla in a couple of years now, uh, but, oh, it, yeah. <laughs> Honestly, this, this isn't giving me, uh, you know, this isn't reminding me of any other cars. This is kind of unlike anything I've ever driven, to be honest. That is unreal. So maybe 10, 15, 20% throttle and shifting, and I'm not exaggerating, I'm not exaggerating you guys, you can literally, like you can't feel that shift. There's, I mean, <laughs> that's, that's about as seamless as it can get. I believe it's a nine speed dual clutch in this car. Uh, I believe I'm correct in saying it's the, this is the only car that has this exact transmission. I could be wrong on that. So in the gauge cluster here, you do have uh, two, the only two analog gauges on here. And I kind of like how this is all laid out in Sport Plus mode. So the two analog gauges you have are your coolant temp and then your gas gauge on either side. And then you have your tack dead center. But what's cool is that like the tack needle itself is all digital. All of that can change. But the physical circle, like the ring around the RPMs, that's all, like that's a physical object, which is pretty cool. I know I've said time and time again, all, like I, I drove uh, a new S63 AMG and I'm not really a big fan of AMG's like full screen, uh, like speedo and gauge cluster kind of setup. But this, you know, this is something different. That's what I can appreciate about it. Uh, in the interior, I mean, it's similar to a lot of other Honda and Acura models. First things I noticed when I got in here, uh, the forward visibility is absolutely unreal. It, it's actually quite insane. The front of the car drops off immediately. You can see like what feels like two or three feet in front of you. Uh, you just kind of see the nice arches from the, uh, the fenders up here on either side. Seven thousand full throttle. The shifts, the shifts are the same. I was honestly expecting a little bit more of a kick. You know, like a lot of cars are, like the PDK, especially when you leave it in automatic and you're, you know, twenty-five percent throttle. Um, you'll never feel a shift, but then when you're at the top end, you actually will kind of feel the shift. This is, this is the smoothest transmission I've ever driven, like hands down. So basically, there are three electric motors in this vehicle. <laughs> one for each of the front wheels, so obviously it's all-wheel drive, and then one uh, to help power the rear wheels, and then there's the, obviously the twin-turbo V6 that powers the rear of the car. Um, so, what you get is torque fill, huge torque fill, and, uh, and a pretty insane torque factoring system. Now obviously we're not on the track, so to push this car to the limits, it's tougher, uh, more and more so in uh, 2019 and, and as time goes on, to actually reach the limits of a vehicle. Like to reach the limits of this vehicle, you need to be on a track. 
but those electric motors absolutely create a totally seamless power band to this vehicle. You don't really feel the turbo spool up. You hear them spool up. If you listen very closely, you can hear the turbo spool up a little bit. I mean, it drives, it drives really well though. It definitely drives <laughs> very well. And you know what, it still has what I think is one of this car's best assets, which is that it still retains, like, it's, it's a Honda. You can totally daily, dri daily drive this car, you know, it's comfortable, um, it's got all your climate control, all your nav, obviously, um, and there's not much sacrifice here other than, like I said before, with the mid-engine car, visibility, obviously, uh, is a thing you just have to deal with. And I know a lot of you guys watching the channel are... You know, our purists like me, your, your drivers, whether you like, you know, gasoline, manual transmissions, less driver aids, that's kind of how, how I am as a person. And when you initially look at the spec list for this car, you think, oh, okay, it's a hybrid. They're, they're trying desperately to, it kind of reminds you of the i8, you know, where you look at the i8, you're like, oh, okay, you were hoping it to be a sports car, but it's a hybrid and it's mostly a daily driver. This is the opposite. The hybrid technology in this car, first and foremost, is for performance. It is not meant to, it's not meant to, like, to be a hybrid so they can be super green and you can get insane, you know, fuel economy. I mean, from a roll, uh, you would, you're pretty hard pressed to find a vehicle that can just go like right off the bat like that, other than like a P100D or something, or a 918. But again, this is like a tenth of the cost of a 918, so what are you gonna do? Stylistically, uh, I know a lot of people are kind of, you know, hit or miss on this vehicle. I think it's stunning. I think it's it's a great design. Um, it doesn't have anything about it that's too over the top. It does have those cool, really cool flying buttresses back there that are very much a, uh, a product of function, uh, as well as design, you know? But I, I just really think it's a gorgeous car. It's got similar proportions to, you know, the Audi R8s of the world and stuff like that. But it's very distinctly an Acura, and I think if you had drop this as like, or if you had seen this as like a prototype or something like that on the road beforehand and you didn't know what it was, I think you could still kind of tell like, oh, hey, maybe, maybe that is the next generation NSX, you know, it still has a little bit of the original feel, um, or look about it rather, which is cool. It, it very much excites me uh, what what aftermarket companies are going to be able to do with this vehicle once you know you get bigger turbos in there, and then so you still have that electric kick, but then followed by like a big boost rush. That would that would be absolutely insane. I think I think people are gonna. I mean, it's a very limited market, but I think you're gonna start seeing uh, people do some some pretty cool stuff with this car. All right, you guys. Well. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed this quick little drive in the NSX. Hey, Sony, thanks again. Yeah, of course. Really appreciate it. Uh, short notice. Definitely check him out on Instagram. He's constantly down here uh, cruising with, you know, all the big supercar guys. I know uh, he's driven with Damon from Daily Driven Exotics as well down here. Uh, but yeah, we're pretty much wrapping up our Southern California adventure and we will be heading up back to Vancouver. Uh, we've got a couple really sweet cars lined up for when we get back. Subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, hit me up on Instagram, at Roads and Travel. That's the best way to keep up with what we are driving and filming. We'll see you guys next time.